All right, so a few more examples here of finding partial fraction decomposition. So uh, the first one I'm going to do here is A, uh, this 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 over x squared times x plus 3. So write it down here. I like to stick my x in parentheses. And the reason why is, to me, okay, we see x squared, that, that looks quadratic. Um, I mean, x squared is quadratic, but when we do our partial fraction decomposition, uh, to me, I see a linear factor, which is x, but it's been repeated because it's being multiplied by itself. We could write x times x. So really, we have a linear factor that's repeated, and it says to do our partial fraction decomposition, one of the fractions involves just x, and the other fraction is then going to involve x squared. If this had been like x to the 20th power, we would have an x, we would have a fraction with x squared in the denominator, we would have x cubed, x to the 4th, to the 5th, to the 6th, to the 7th, all the way up to x to the 20th. We also have our x plus 3, so that's also going to be uh, another fraction. And then we just put constants on top, a, b, and c. Okay, so one of the little nuances here is just uh, kind of remembering that little trick. But now I'm going to do uh, the same thing as in the other examples. I'm going to get rid of my denominator, all the denominators, by basically multiplying both sides by x squared times x plus 3. So if we do it on the left, hey, we're certainly going to have to do it on the right. And let's see if we can't clean things up nicely. Um, on the left, everything's going to cancel out. We'll just be left with the, the, this numerator, 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. On the right side, when we multiply, one of the x's will cancel out. So we'll be left with a times x, and then x plus 3. We'll also be left with, um, so when we distribute all this out, notice the x squareds will cancel and we'll just be left with b times x plus 3. And then when we multiply the x plus 3, uh, x plus 3 squared, x plus 3 times x squared to the, our third term, the x plus 3's will cancel. And we'll be left with c times x squared. OK, so a couple different ways now uh, that we can go about figuring out our values. When they were all linear, we did uh, kind of this trick of making certain terms go away. For example, here we could plug in x equals 0. I think that would allow us to solve for b. And we could plug in x equals negative 3, and that would allow us to solve for c. And you can certainly do that here, but what I'm going to do, just to kind of show the long way, uh, it, because actually if we did that, we, we still wouldn't be able to find all a, b, and c. And you can try that to, to, to verify that for yourself. I'm going to do this process of equating coefficients. Okay, so basically what I do, the left side I just leave alone, 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. Uh, the right side I basically get rid of all the parentheses. So to me I see an ax times x, that would be ax squared. I would have ax times 3, I'm going to write that as 3ax. If we distribute our b, we'll have bx plus 3b. And then we have our c times x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my like terms together. So notice we've got an ax squared and a cx squared. I don't see any other x squared terms. I'm going to factor the x squared out. But instead of pulling it out to the left, I'm going to pull it out to the right. And then in parentheses, we would have the a plus c left over. Plus, now I see my terms, uh, here's a term that involves only x, and another term that involves only x. So again, I'm going to factor that x out, but I'm going to factor it to the right, 3a plus b, and you don't have to, this is just normally how people write it. And then we've got our 3b, that's our constant term, because again, eventually b is some number, we're just trying to figure out what it is. So 3b is my only, uh, my only constant term. Well, on the left side, we still have our 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. That's just hanging out. Now, here comes the step of equating coefficients. We're going to create a little system of equations because 
Notice in front of the x squared on the left side, there's a 2. What's in front of the x squared on the right side? Well, there's this quantity a plus c. So that's going to be one of our linear equations. What number is in front of the x on the left side? Well, there's a 4. And then what's the coefficient on the x um, on the right side? Well, that would be 3a plus b. And last but not least, the constant on the left side is negative 5. The constant on the right side is 3b. And notice now we've got a nice little system of linear equations. Instead of x and y, well, we got a's and b's and c's. Okay, So instead of x, y, z, a, b, c. Well, you know, sometimes this can be the tedious part, but I, uh, uh, this one I think is not too bad. Notice we could divide both sides by 3, and we would get negative 5 thirds as our value for b. So I say, hey, that's great, because notice the second equation involves a and b. So I'm going to take my 4 equals 3a plus b. I'm going to take that equation. So we had 4 equals 3a plus b. But we know what b is. We know it's negative 5 thirds. So now I simply have to take this equation and solve for a. Um, so let's see, I could take 4, I could add the 5 thirds to both sides. Let's see, I'm definitely going to run out of room here at some point. Um, if we multiply top and bottom by 3, we would get 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3. Well, 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3, that would give us 17 over 3 equals 3a. And if we uh, divide both sides by 3, or equivalently multiply both sides by 1 third, so we've got 17 over 3 equals 3a. If we multiply both sides by 1 third, we'll be left with a on the right, and it looks like we'll get 17 over 9 on the left. So now we know our a value. And now I'm going to take our first equation, the fact that 2 has to equal a plus c, and I'm going to use this to solve for c. So it said 2 equals a plus c, but we know a is 17 over 9 plus c. So we've got 2 over 1 minus 17 over 9 equals positive c. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of my first fraction by 9. It looks like we would get 18 minus 17, or 1 ninth, as our value for c. So all right, we finally figured out um, all of our values, A, we already figured out B, and we've got C. So it says our partial fraction decomposition, which was this, it says it's A over X. So we'll get 17 over 9 all over X plus B. And again, we found B to be negative 5 thirds down here. So we'll have. Uh, negative 5 thirds over x squared. And then we figured out our c value to be positive 1 ninth all over x plus 3. And this is now our partial fraction decomposition of that original rational function.